Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today, painting a red chili in watercolour. And more than that, it's painting with a limited palette and all the colour mixing is done on the page. So let's get going. Oh, and by the way, if you want to hang around to the end, I'll show you um, exactly the colours I used, how much I squeezed out onto my palette, a little bit of colour preparation. But let's jump right into the process. Is a quick pencil sketch and I'm just using a HB pencil and sketching really lightly. I don't like to be able to see the pencil mark at the end of my one of my watercolors. So you'll see me here pressing with incredibly light pressure. The first thing that I'm taking note of are the highlights on the chili. I'm using my flat brush to add water. Everywhere I can see a highlight, I'm adding water. Everywhere that's light red, I'm adding water. And you can see that I joined all those beautiful highlights together with a good amount of water. I'm thinking about the light versus dark, and that's what I'm explaining with my right hand. I'm going to go straight in with the Cadmium Green Deep. The Cadmium Green Deep is slightly neutralized by the fact that a little bit of the alizarin carmine had been added to it but we're talking about one percent it's uh, probably 95 percent cadmium green deep straight out of the tube and probably four percent water and that tinsiest bit of uh, alizarin carmine that was completely unintentional um, my intention in this video was to paint with pure color and have all the colors mixing on the page and i'm pretty much have that happening. You can see me coming in now with pure alizarin carmine and I'm mixing it into um, the edges of the chili, the left hand edge of the chili which is all red and then I'm going into the into the cadmium green deep as well as touching all of the beautiful highlights. I just love how the watercolor behaves as it moves into that water. You can see down the bottom there that I left a little bit uh, with a little bit of a hard edge and that way I can ensure that that um, can't mix in as the uh, paint gets tipped back and forward. I love watching paint move and run uh, into itself in this way. It's one of the things that makes watercolour so special is that you can do this with watercolour and just water. Continuing to tip and force the red into the green and some of the green into the red because I want to keep some of the red as pure carmine but I want most of that green to get neutralized into a dark complementary gray by allowing the red to move into that green. While I'm um, just playing with the paper the camera has gone slightly out of focus so it just takes a second to come back and I've grabbed a tissue because there is just way too much water. I was way too generous with the amount of water that I used. The big advantage of having all these lights on the table like that and the page flat is that you can see exactly where all those incredible highlights <laughs> are, which by highlight I mean really, really a lot of water. It's really wet. So now I'm lifting out with a tissue. Now the big advantage to using a tissue is that it's just massively lifting up all the water that has poured into the undulations of the paper. The paper's got them wet, makes mountains and valleys, and the paint pulls in there. I'm using the tissue to soften that uh, hard edge I mentioned down the bottom too. The disadvantage to using a tissue is that uh, it takes off all the paint. And um, it's actually a bit unusual for me to be using a tissue to remove. Sometimes I've got better control over my water. Now I'm lifting, using, not lifting, the alizarin carmine and using it directly into the green because it was still way too green and I want to darken the green and turn it into what will be a dark, neutralized, ready, greeny, complementary gray. And that's what you can see on the right hand side of the chili in the photograph. I'm using the flat brush to blend. I'm constantly dipping it into the water to clean it off, onto the towel to turn it into a thirsty brush. Water, towel, and I do that process over and over and over. Water, towel, and every time I'm going to the towel because I want to remove the moisture that I'm picking up, 
I'm picking it up, make a highlight, put it on the towel because I, that way I constantly return the brush to that lovely state where it's capable of picking up moisture and it picks it up as beautifully as any sponge could. I'm just doing lots of tipping back and forward. The paper that I used is Kmart. It's super, super cheap. cheap. I painted this in uh, a small half hour period of time that I had before I had to go out and I just grabbed cheap paper because I wanted to practice the painting that I was going to go and teach that day. Um, but uh, it turned out so well that um, I'm now posting the video about it. I'm extremely disappointed that I didn't use a beautiful piece of paper because then I could have sold this painting as it was. It's on a little cheap piece of Kmart. It's the brand they call it is Anko and it's non-archival so I can't sell this painting if I wanted to unless someone wanted to buy a painting that is uh, gonna fox at some point in the future. You can see me there focusing on where the excess moisture has dipped into that same little valley and I'm tipping it up and getting it to pour out but I'm trying to keep the darks on the dark side of the the dark side of the chili I'm trying to keep the darks over there and uh, I'm just going to do a little more adjusting lifting off thirsty brush you to put it on the towel to turn it back into a thirsty brush Lots and lots of lifting out. It takes a little while, but it's worth it. And the beauty of that soft, thirsty brush is that every mark I make is soft, brilliant for blending. And the chili is a round object, so you want lots of soft edges. I keep coming back to that <laughs> big dip in the middle and again I'm tipping the page. It's quite lovely when I tip it onto this angle. It's about a 45 degree angle and then I go right up to the 90 degree angle to really get that paint moving out. And I quite love how the watercolour moves slowly out of that dip and it's so gentle the result of when you allow the paint to move just with gravity. Gravity is a great watercolor technique. You can see me just thinking about the, uh, I'm using my hands quite expressively there to talk about the um, amount of water that's there. So at this stage, I take it away and I dry it. Okay, I've dried it with the hair dryer, probably about 80%, but I'm just pointing out there some of the sections that I didn't bother to dry with the hairdryer, they can air dry, that's all right, because I'm not going to be working into those sections any further. I want to paint the greenery. It's got this cute little green skirt at the top. I'm sticking with my completely limited palette of Cadmium Green Deep and I paint most of this skirt and stem with Cadmium Green Deep. Same method, I use the flat brush to apply water where I see highlights or at least lights. So I'm adding water, but you can see that this time I've added a controlled amount of water. I decided for the stem uh, that I'd learnt the lesson about too much water down the bottom and so it's quite a small amount. And most of this stem is about to be painted with one colour, the cadmium green deep. And I'm adding lots of darks to the dark side and allowing it to hit the water that I've added and create beautiful softness. With this quill, it has this incredibly beautiful sharp point. So you could see there that I'm able to paint 
with the body of the brush and do fat strokes and with that incredible tip I'm also able to do really really thin edges and that's what I was doing on the stem on the left hand side I'm coming in to add those beautiful imperfections all down the stem are some imperfections where you know, I know some insects come along probably attempting to lay its eggs on the chili and so I've just neutralized some of the green with alizarin carmine so again I'm sticking with a limited palette the whole time this little tiny brush also an art district brush is a little tiny <clears throat> is a little tiny filbert and it's just the right size to get in between those green marks that I've added so I'm washing it putting it on the towel constantly I wash it off because all I'm doing there is blending I'm not putting any paint on I'm just taking the little bits of paint that are, I've already applied with my other brush and blending it with that little tiny filbert more highlights with the flat brush at this point I realize that my hands totally in way in the way of the camera so that's why I start one way and then move it to the side I'm trying very hard to remember that uh, I'm filming this and I'm getting better at working that stuff out unfortunately this art district brush began to molt so there's a little bit of uh, I'm just pulling off one of the bristles I was pretty disappointed because <laughs> I was in love with that art, art district flat brush I don't think it continued to do that I um, but I'm not sure up until that point art district brushes had been really really good Going back to the little tiny filbert brush and I begin to focus on the skirt and I'm saying skirt I don't know what the technical term is but the green bit that sits at the top of the chili and you can see me there just removing some final highlights on the little skirt it's got this beautiful ripple effect it goes up down up down up down just like a, a frilly skirt and I'm blending if there's almost no paint on your brush then it's in this beautiful damp state that can lift but it can also blend just lifting a little bit more there with the filbert and because it's this little tiny brush it's capable of lifting off tiny little bits so quite subtle the changes that I'm making at this stage of last little highlights and I start to get ready to add some beautiful darks that are the little shadows that are being cast by the skirt onto the top of the chili and I dipped my brush straight into that alizarin carmine it's beautiful and creamy in its consistency which means it's wonderfully dark So I'm putting the marks on where those beautiful shadows are and then in a moment I begin to blend paint off dry off and then you turn that little paintbrush into a blending paintbrush and you can see me blending there from dark to mid-tone to light tone and it really starts to bring the painting together this final little final little lovely um, shadowy marks uh, so again the art district brush began to molt so that's <laughs> you can see me there um, trying to remove the little tiny hair that was uh, bothering me a bit more blending
and I'm pretty close to the end at this point. So in a moment, I'm going to um, show you the colors that I used, a uh, little bit about how I prepared the colors, um, what exactly the colors are that I used, and um, the palette preparation. So when I began painting, I had already prepared these colors. Thank you so much for watching. If you've uh, watched this far, please give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of it. If you're interested uh, more in colors and my palette preparation, then I'm going to jump straight into the palette preparation. So thanks for hanging around for the color preparation. I'm using a little ceramic palette here and you can see me at the moment preparing my alizarin carmine. I'd squeezed some out the day or so before. So I added some water and just re-dissolved the paint into that water. It's a real creamy rich, creamy rich mix, which means that the tone is beautifully dark. I'm spending just a few minutes uh, preparing that little well and um, massaging the paint in. I realize uh, that there's a little lump on the brush later on and you'll see me spend time making sure that the lump on my brush is dissolved. Now, in that little well on the right hand side that I'm playing with at the moment is Cadmium Green Deep. There's a little bit of alizarin carmine mixed into it, that, but that was actually a little bit <laughs> accidental. You can see me move my brush into the blue, that's an ultramarine blue. And what I'm doing in each of those three wells, these are the only three colors that, that I use, the red, the green, and the blue, very limited palette. What I'm doing is wetting them. So the cadmium green deep, I'm going to top up with pure cadmium green deep it's a holbein color that one the alizarin carmine is a windsor and newton a really incredibly old tube so i squeeze out a big dob of cadmium green deep and mix it in so the paint consistency is really creamy i'm painting with really dark paint and then adding water to the page to get my lovely highlights